Hello once again. Welcome back. This is Global Tube with Falodi. Now Today, we are talking about a very, very interesting topic. A topic that is there to everybody's heart. I'm sure it's something you're actually aware of. No, you might not actually know the meaning of that topic. Now, it's a word that permeates, that lives around every human being. It's a word you breathe in, it's a word you take out. In fact, this particular topic is responsible for most war most wars in the international political system. And what is this topic? I know you are intrigued already. Yes, I want you to be intrigued and interested. Now, that topic is power. Yes, power. The power in international relations goes beyond the usual conception of power that is available to the general public. Now, power is the most powerful ingredient, the most powerful ingredient within the international political system. Now, without power, State cannot exist in that international political system. In fact, I've always been saying this, power is the currency of international relations. That is what states use to trade with one another. You respect states based on the level of their power, or if you like, again, you disrespect them if they don't actually have any power. Like I'm fond of saying to my student, be poor, but be powerful. Then again, be rich and also be powerful. The interesting question is, what is power? Now, uh, the definition of power we are given is going to be utilitarian, or utilitarian, sorry. Utilitarian in the sense that we see power as a means to an end. In other words, power is a tool you use to achieve an objective. So it's, it serves its functions, it is a means to an end, and it is also an end in itself. I think that gives us a better conception of what the Power is, rather than the usual secondary school definition of uh, power is the ability to be able to make somebody to do what they wouldn't have done under normal circumstances. That is apologies to Robert Dahl, but that definition is outdated. What is power now? Now, power is the use of tangible and intangible resources and assets by a state to achieve objectives within the international political system. That sounds better, don't you think? So the use, that means it's a tool. It's like your pen, it's like your phone that you use to achieve an objective. Without power, what they mean is that you will not be able to actually achieve those uh, objectives. Now, listen to the definition again. There are important ingredients in that definition. I said the use of tangible things you can see and intangible things you cannot see together to achieve an objective. So I said power is a tool. So it means you use power to achieve things within the international political system. So without power, based on that definition, you don't actually be able to achieve anything at all. I said you have tangible and you have intangible. Technically, it means before it can be agreed and one can say that you are powerful, you must have the two together. Tangible, the one we can see. Then intangible, the one you cannot see, assets and resources. Then you combine the two together and use them to achieve objectives within the international political system. That was why I said power is a force to be reckoned with within the international political system. And also, power, based on my definition, differentiates states. The amount of the tangible and intangible determines the kind of respect you are accorded within the international political system. What are the tangible things, you may ask? Are they spiritual or are they physical? Tangible things, of course, are those things you can touch, that you can feel. Well, if I can use the word physically. A good example of tangible things, for example, that military might, the population of a state, the geography of a state, and of course, importantly, the natural resources. Those are the tangible. When I say the military might, you can now understand that America is one of the most powerful countries in the world. It has all those things. It has geography. It has the population. And of course, it has, importantly, Military resources, which has explained well, America is a country that we sometimes refer to as an hegemon. America can go all over the globe to achieve its uh, objective because it has power, both tangible and intangible. So what are the intangible things? Those are the ones you cannot see. An important uh, one among them is what we call political will. Yes, they so said that is the major reason why Nigeria is not actually a superpower. Political will is an intangible that you cannot see. Patriotism is another important intangible that you cannot say will 
is another strength. Those are things that are not actually easily quantifiable. The two of them together is exactly what makes a state to be powerful. A state should be able to calibrate the two to achieve its objective within the international political system. Now, quickly, what are the sources of this power? Is it created by God? When God created the earth, according to the Bible, was power among those things that God actually created? Or is it something that is in indigenous to a state? Or you have to buy with money? You have to cajole? Or you have to beg people? What are the sources of this power? Briefly, there are three major sources of power. Now, the first one is what we call natural sources of power. Second one is what we call social psychological source of power. And the third one is what we call synthetic power. If you ask me, up to the three, I prefer the synthetic power, but I will explain. What are the natural sources of power? One, you have population. Two, you have geography. Three, importantly, of course, you have uh, natural resources. Remember, I said it's a means to an end. It's a tool to achieve an objective. Before you can use power, you must know the power that you have. You must know the what of the power that you have. Two, the people must want that power that you possess, then that way you can use the power to achieve an objective. For example, Nigeria was able to play, play an important role in South African independence because of its tangible resources, natural source of power, oil. Oil was a commodity that was needed within the international community. Nigeria leveraged its membership of OPEC and based on the fact that it has natural abundance of crude oil, to achieve important objective within the international political system in the 1970s and 1980s. We played a vital role because of our oil in the Angolan War, then of course in apartheid there. South Africa. said oil is an important source of power and is a natural resource. Not just oil. Remember that thing they call uranium? Yes, uranium. And we also have that in Nigeria too. I mean, it's an important ingredient in building the nuclear bomb or atomic bomb. So I said you have the natural... So uh, natural resources, oil, for example, then you have uh, geography. Geography matters. So geography of the state can be an important source of power. America is lucky. It's bounded on one side by the Pacific and on the other side by the Atlantic Ocean. So it's a source of power in itself. America is not actually easily susceptible to any form of invasion. But you come like Nigeria. Nigeria is bordered by all those other countries around its territories. Niger can walk into Nigeria's backyard. Benin Republic can walk into Nigeria's backyard. The, 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 the Chad can also walk into Nigeria's backyard. Geography is a source of power. Switzerland is a wonderful country. It's surrounded by mountainous regions, mountains, mountains. It's, it's difficult for any country to actually invade Switzerland. The geography of Russia is also, I mean, it also gives it an, an unbelievable advantage. You can ask Napoleon Bonaparte and Adolf Hitler. It was easier for them to enter into Russia, the two of them, to enter into Russia. But coming out of Russia was a tad difficult. Why? Because of the expansiveness of Russia. Then, of course, population. China is a good example. It's interesting that China has the world's highest population, 1.2 billion plus. And yet, they are not the world leader when it comes to poverty. I mean, that unenviable award is given to Nigeria. Why? Because Nigeria has a population. We refer to Nigeria as the island of Africa, but we did not actually mobilize our population. China has mobilized its population, and that is why it is a world leader that it is today. Second source of power, I said social psychological. That those are the intangibles, those things that you cannot see. You know, we sing the national national anthem and the pledges are rise or compact. It's meant to kindle, rekindle that spirit, that burning desire for the love of that country, for you to be able to do greater things for your country, Nigeria. Well, I don't know where that fire is now within Nigeria, but they, exactly, those are the intangibles. We are great, giant of Africa. They are meant to motivate Nigeria to achieve the unachievable. You know, the Americans take a great pride in their identity. That's exactly what the social psychological aspect of power means. It, it gives you greater pride. It gives you a drive. It gives you motivation. As it is, I keep telling all my students that there is no country in the world where there is no corruption. No, it is the will, the intangible, to fight that corruption that matters. And that is what is lacking in Nigeria. Three, finally, you have the synthetic. I consider the synthetic the most important aspect of power. Why? Because with the synthetic, you create what you need to be able to have that power. Then use what you've created to achieve your objective. Two important synthetic sorts of power. Military might 
an economic strength. Economic of the strength is what you create from the scratch. Iron ore, you use it to get steel. Steel is what you now use to build, to create your industrial revolution. And that is why the synthetic is important. The same with military might. Best militaries are not born, that they were made. And you start them from the scratch. Imaginations, theories, ideas, then you practicalize them, then you make them great, then you use that thing you've created to achieve your objective within the international political system. So we've come to the end of the short lecture on what power is and what power is not. So join me next time for another riveting discussion on another aspect of international relations. Peace out.